muted, but now we're unmuted. I appreciate you guys being here. Oh, man, I'm so excited because you guys know how much I love breaking down film. And this is probably the greatest game that I've seen ever. I mean, I've been I've been at the I've been at the Hail Mary game. I've been at the Buffalo playoff game uh, 2017. I was at the Cowboys game. Still, this takes the cake. So I am super excited about breaking down the film for this game here. And this is your first show with us. Uh, we do film breakdowns Tuesdays and Friday nights. Tuesdays are the uh, breakdown from the game before, and Fridays are preview film breakdowns for the teams that we're going to play. Um, so tonight, we're doing that exact thing. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because sometimes we sprinkle in some shows uh, during the week. Like, uh, yes, we did a show yesterday, a Victory Monday celebration. This week, we're actually doing a Thursday show because I'm leaving on Friday to go to Kansas City. So I'm super pumped about that. Uh, should be a good time. If you're going to Kansas City, hit me up, and um, we can uh, do something down there. That's fun for sure. Tonight's a very fun episode because uh, I had a company reach out to me, and they said they love my content, um, and they wanted to do a giveaway on the show. So uh, this company here, uh, they're called... Uh, um, I have their name here. They're called Playbook Products, okay? And they wanted to give away some coasters, right? And these coasters are pretty cool. Um, they're like coasters of like plays that the Jags have been a part of. So here you see the play, uh, the fourth down play that the ETN ran against the Chargers. Uh, and if you look at the other pictures here, um, this is all four. You know, these are just wins in Jacksonville that were massive. The 2017 playoff win against Buffalo. Uh, the 2008 wild card win against Pittsburgh with David Garrard doing the run, and the 1997 Jaguars beating the Broncos 30 to 27 um, on this play here. So um, they want to give this away to you guys, and um, they said they offered to do it on my channel. So I'm super excited about that. They said the only uh, stipulation was you had to follow their uh, they had you have to follow their uh, Twitter. So it's at Playbook Product. I'm trying to. Trying to bring it up here. Um, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, desktop challenge sometimes. Let's see if we can bring up their profile here. I mean, it was nice of them to do this, so go follow this one right here. And um, that's the only stipulation. In about 15 minutes, uh, I'm gonna just like randomly pick someone to do a giveaway. I was trying to think of like a trivia. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. Didn't really care that much to think of something. I mean, you guys know Jags better than anybody. I mean, this group here is like Jags. Like, they we know it all. I mean, we talk about the Jags multiple times a week. Uh, I see a lot of the same people in the chat. So make sure you're following there. Wanted to give it away. Playbook products. Make sure you're following it there if you want to win the giveaway. All right. I'm going to check if you're following them. After I announce the winner. And again, in about 15 minutes, I'm not going to make you guys stay for the whole show because that, that would be mean. In about 15 minutes, um, I'm just going to literally close my eyes, scroll, and then the first name I see wins it. It's the only way I can be unfair and unbiased. I didn't want to pick a channel member because I thought about that. But, I mean, not everyone's in a position to to pay to be a channel member, so I didn't think that was fair. So uh, we will we'll definitely figure out a way to, to make it unfair. I'll close my eyes and the first name I see. Um, thank you for joining us. Before we get to the film, make sure that you follow the Twitter, my Twitter, and my Instagram. I'm going to Kansas City this weekend, so I do a lot of the pictures and videos on there. If you follow that, then you know that I post there all the time, especially Twitter. Um, and you can see all the videos and pictures and selfies. I, I, I take selfies sometimes, especially after I've had a few uh, beverages. Um, fan show here, right? First video, uh, if you're watching, it's a fan show. I try to get to all the comments. I want to get the Jags perspective on the team. Nolly Full Cab, not only was the first one in the chat, he was the first channel member in the chat. Shout out to you, Nolly. Nolly's always good about being here real early. I appreciate that. The Great Mistake Bozo says hello. Josh Carter says Duval. DJM says Jason Son. Uh, Full Cab says Chiefs who? Absert says Let's Go. Shay, channel member, says Duval. And with the Trevor Lawrence emojis. I'm surprised Shay didn't get a little inside info that they were going to Waffle House and and meet them there. And on second thought, he might have, now that I think about it. CF Coaster says Duval. I love it, CF. Uh, CF, so I, I've been liking your Twitter lately. I'm, I just thought, I thought I'd give you a little shout out. I've been liking your, um, if you're the same CF Coasters, I've been liking some of your content on Twitter. Jag Gator says the Jags are a more complete team than Kansas City and Buffalo. Let's get this. Effin win. I love it, Jag Gator. Uh, I try not to swear in the first like 15 minutes. A lot of like 
underage people watch this show. And I don't want to. I don't want to be the one that introduces them to the uh, normalities of of cursing. Uh, Andre Oleus says Duval. Jags fan cave says Duval. Rico says let's Evan go on to the Chiefs. Uh, Fat boy Shats says we have some unfinished business in Kansas City. Uh, Ron Beecher says I just watched that hype video sounds of the game and I still got tears in my eyes. What a great game. DJM says is this your first giveaway on the channel? Yes, it is actually. Um, I'm pretty pumped about it. I mean, I, I, I hope. I mean, they seem pretty trustworthy. And actually, I I was talking to a buddy whose buddy worked for the company, so they're a real company, and um, you know, I'm excited for it. They said they'd give me one too, so we'll see if that happens. Um, DJM says, "Rip, I don't have Twitter. Well, do you have Instagram? Oh, yeah. You might be able to follow them on Instagram. You could if you if you follow on Instagram, Playbook Products. I'm sure they have one on. I'm sure they have an Instagram." Um, glad someone else will enjoy it. Oh, you're so altruistic, DJM. All right, let's look at the PFF grades. I know PFF's been been through the ringer lately, which is fine. Um, I I like it honestly more. Like the more I, I we do these shows, the more that I realize I actually like this <laughs> PFF more for the breakdown of how many like snaps they played. Like Ingram played 71 snaps, 52 were pass, 18 were run block. I mean, I do look at the grade. But, I mean, how do you have a zero pass block as Evan Ingram? I mean, I did see the one play they're talking about. He totally whiffed on his man, <laughs> and I gave up the pressure that led to one of the interceptions. <laughs> so the zero grade is probably accurate for Evan Ingram. But we can ignore that because he had a monster game. Um, the touchdown, he did really well running. A lot. All these receivers did really well running after the catch. And... If you're going to get on Evan Ingram for the one pass block play that he whiffed on, he played really well in his 18 run block snaps. I mean, really well. I mean, stood out on tape, and and we're going to see some of the – I have one play um, specifically queued up for the blocking from the wide receivers. Um, So, good job. You could tell Doug Peterson went after blocking receivers um, as well. Like, made sure that was part of it. Brandon Sheriff. 74 snaps, 73 grade. I like that. Travis Etienne, I mean, had quietly had a good game. When you don't score a touchdown, sometimes you can go under the radar. But I thought Etienne played a pretty good game. Fortner, I mean, again, this is your fourth rated player, Luke Fortner. And he's he's a rookie. Beautiful. Love seeing it. Um, Kirk, Lawrence, Luke Farrell's always up there with his one snap. Usually his one to four snaps, but he's always up there. Something to be said for consistency. Marvin Jones with a touchdown. Juwan Taylor, I thought, played pretty well. Shally played pretty well. Both these guys had bad moments, but that's going to happen, especially in the playoffs. Little had a bad moment, but again, I thought, I'd, you know, considering that they were blocking some of the two of the edge best edge rushers, two of the best edge rushers left in the playoffs, um, I thought they held their own pretty well. This was surprising. A lot of people thought Jamal Agnew was going to have a bigger um, impact. Um, four snaps. That is not ideal. It's not ideal at all. So uh, uh, the play, he he had one play where they threw him the ball, and he actually had a little bit of a gap close to the end zone, and he slipped, if you remember. So, I mean, kind of didn't do the most with his one opportunity, but was good as a kick returner, as, as always. Kyle Donovan has become a member. Thank you, Kyle Donovan. I appreciate it. I think Kyle Donovan's been a member before in the past. So shout out to you, Kyle. Um, he's on the Matt Jones level. And I was just actually looking through some stuff the other day. Um, I still have my Matt Jones jersey. And actually, it's not my Matt Jones jersey. It's Joey's Matt Jones jersey that you may guys remember from um, another Jags podcast back in the day. I was getting some of these comments, and then we will briefly look at the defensive PFF, and then we'll go to the film. I know people watch this for the film, um, and in about eight minutes, we'll do the giveaway. Um, all right. Uh, T E and if I, I, I start ranting, I'm a podcaster now, if you guys didn't know, um, all of these videos go up on podcast now, um, not the Tuesday ones. Cause the Tuesdays are pretty film breakdown dense. So I don't put these up on, <laughs> on, uh, podcast. Cause that might be kind of a, like pointless, but the Tuesday and Friday shows go up or I'm sorry, the Mondays and Friday shows go up on, um, podcast. So you can just search on Spotify Jaguars United if you want to listen to it rather than watch it. But I rant now, and I miss comments. So if I miss your comment, and you thought you think it's a good one that's worth um, you know talking about or saying, just type it again. Look, we're all forgiving here. This is not one of those toxic chats, right? Um, rarely do our commenters get into it and start arguing, because this is more of like a uh, 
refined taste Jaguar fan show. So you'll see that as, as you go on. Um, we're nice around here. Type it again. No one will judge you. Um, all right. T.E.K. Jericho says, can we have a game where the Jags start hot and stay hot? I mean, that's something that we've talked about on the show before is, um, y- you know, Doug Peterson always defers if given the option. Always defers. I think, I think 100% of the time when given the option, he's deferred. It seems like we win the coin toss a lot, or it seems like the teams we play receive the ball a lot. So we're always getting less possessions in the first half than we are in the second half. That's typically how it goes when you, when you defer. So it's not surprising that we're a second half team, but you're right. Four interceptions is, is not starting cold. That's starting horrible, freezing, almost unexcusable. But if you win, we forgive you around here. Um, that's a different CF Coasters. I got to check that person out on Twitter. Maybe it's like CF Carolina. It's something like that. You can compete, CF. DJM says, Dougie versus Reed revenge match. I love it. Come back from 27-0, and they still think it's an easy win for the Chiefs, says Cass Shoots. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. The Chiefs are a good team. They beat us once before, but it was close. It was a good game. And, um, yeah. Chef Florida Boy says, I'm now following you and Playbook Products on Twitter. Chef, you weren't following me before? Come on, Chef. I think I'm following you. I wish playoff tickets were cheaper. This is from Cass. I want to go to Kansas City to support my Jags. All right, so um, I'm, I'm in a good opportunity where I could take off a day of work. Um, you know, had some help with the ticket costs from uh, friends and family. And so, uh, you know, I was able to get my ticket for, I think, 220 I'm sitting, like, seven rows from the top. But Arrowhead, like, kind of is built up, so it's, like, top's not as bad as it is, like, TIA Bank. Um, the flight was, like, 300 round trip. Airbnb, 50 bucks a night. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be fun, man. It's supposed to now, but in town, it's supposed to be uh, 30 degrees and raining. So, if you were having a little bit of FOMO, maybe that'll help you kind of get over it a little bit. Um, I know I get FOMO a lot. Um, Philip Butcher says, let's go. I made it. Uh, Long John Silver 85 channel member and donated last show. Thank you again, Long John. He says, I have to apologize to ETN because I thought it was a mistake letting go Robinson. I thought we should have kept both, but he has been amazing. Okay. I like it. Um, ETN, I think everyone liked Robinson. It wasn't like you were the only one that, that thought that. I mean, Robinson was productive, and a productive running back is always valuable. So um, let's, we're going to look at a couple plays here, um, and then we'll, then we'll do the giveaway. Um, if you're, uh, if you're, uh, watching today's show, sorry, I blanked out for a second. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a professional boys. I don't go around claiming to be. Um, if you're, if you didn't watch yesterday's show, we kind of did a cheesy short breakdown of the Trevor Lawrence touchdown passes. Um, last night was more of a victory show. So, um, we're going to show those tonight, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on them because we did spend a little bit of time on them yesterday. So if you want to see the Trevor Lawrence touchdown passes, we are going to show them here, but we broke them down as well. Yesterday's show and go watch yesterday's show. It's on VOD. It's on podcast. Go check it out. So we we saw the touchdowns passes already, but, um, let me show you some plays that stood out to me that weren't the touchdown passes. Okay. Like these weren't, uh, the touchdown passes. So. Let me make sure this is the right play. Because it got a little sketchy cutting these. Oh, yeah, this was it. All right, again, the non-touchdown pass- passes that I thought, um, like, there was a lot of plays that led us up to the end zone. There was, like, two different situations where, like, ETN was a yard away from scoring. Then the Jags committed a penalty and then moved back, and then Trevor Lawrence had to make a good throw for a touchdown. So it was like, okay, now this might be one of those situations, right? I love Doug Peterson, man. I will freaking say it all day long. I'm so glad we didn't get Byron left, which we'll talk about that later. Okay, look at this. Trips bunch, right? This was um, in the second half, I believe. So this was after they had made adjustments. And one of the adjustments that they made was they started running a lot more trips, right? So the Chargers were running a lot of what's called cover six. Um, and what cover six is is what's called quarter, quarter, half. Q, Q, H, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, 
I'm not sure if, the, if this is the exact situation on this play, but this is essentially what a quarter, quarter half would be. Basically, Derwin James would be playing half the field like it's a cover two, and then this safety's playing a quarter, and then this corner's playing quarters. So you're basically playing what would be like a cover four on one side of the field and a cover two on the other side of the field. And a lot of coaches will just call this cover six, right? You don't see it a lot in the NFL um, because it's not – it's kind of complicated, right? And when you get in the NFL, you kind of want you think that you would have all these complicated coverages in the NFL, but really the coverages are much more complicated in the college level than they are in the NFL level. Um, you have time to teach them in college, you know. Uh, you know, Saban Saban teaches these guys a lot of this stuff. Uh, he runs a lot of this, and um, it, it's you know you see it a lot more at the, actually the amateur levels than you do the professional level. The professional levels just pre play it pretty straightforward. So in cover six, that's good against like a standard coverage, but you can start to create problems with it if you go trips. Like when you go trips, now you have two guys and either a nickel or a linebacker accounting for three people, which on the surface you're thinking, okay, not bad. Like three on three, it's a nickel corners out there, maybe an athletic linebacker. Like we'll take those chances. But look at what the Jags do, all right? They're going to start with, with, with – well, they're, they're going to they're gonna line up – they're going to break the huddle and put ETN out here on the outside. Now, they know he's going to motion back inside, but this allows Trevor to get a look at their coverage, okay? Because look at how they line up initially. They line up with trips to the left, tight, and then two guys out wide. So now the Chargers have to declare what coverage they're in because this is a pretty unconventional formation, right? This would be empty set, three by two, trips bet, bunch to the left. You don't see this a lot in the NFL or at any level. So because of this funky formation, the Chargers have to declare what they're in, okay? So they declare what they're in. Now, I don't know what the coverage. It looks like some sort of man, um, maybe a cover six like I talked about. But look, look what they do. They're going to motion him back in, a little hesitation to freeze the linebacker, and they're going to throw it out to him. And look at the blocking up field. I mean, this is a big play. This is third and short. This is third and short. This is the difference between us scoring a touchdown on this drive and us kicking a field goal. They put him in motion. Watch the blocking down here. I mean, again, the reason why Doug Peterson like went after these guys like like Zay Jones and Christian Kirk is not just because they're really good receivers, but they are like elite run blocking, blocking receivers. Like these receivers, I mean, they're some of the best blocking receivers. And like uh, one term we use in, in evaluating talent is um, a willing blocker. Like, are you willing to block, right? A lot of guys aren't willing to to go block someone bigger or to really get dirty there um, as a receiver who's sometimes undersized. Watch these three guys. Beautiful. Hold their block till the end, but don't hold and get it out there and third and you know third down conversion. We're going to see it here from the end zone. We can take a look at the offensive line protection here. Great job. A couple cut blocks there, right? Not a huge fan of the cut block typically because um, it can you can still bat passes down if you're a good um, D lineman. You're going to see cut blocks here by Shally and Little. It's going to open it up. I mean, again, an underrated play, a third and short Doug Peterson underrated play. So uh, I'm, ex I'm excited to see it. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, to give everyone a chance, um, just type, if you, if you want a chance at the giveaway, just type Duval in the chat um, for the next couple minutes. Um, I'll let it build up for a little bit, and then in a couple minutes, I'll close my eyes and pick a winner for the coasters. So uh, just type Duval in the chat if you want um, a chance to win it. Remember, you have to be following um, them on Twitter or Instagram. So if you're not following them, then you can't win um, because they'll check. And I'll feel bad to them, man. I mean, they're trying to get their product out there, and you know, the least I can do is at least make sure you guys follow them. So at least go follow them, right? Um, let's see here. Duval, okay, Jags Fan Cave gets it. Okay, there they get it. All right, that's all you got to do. Good job. Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, what up, Cardiac Cats channel member? All right, one more play, and then we'll do the giveaway here. Um, oh, which one do I want to do? Okay, here's one here. This one really sticks out to me as a fan, um, as a, someone who really loves the fundamentals of football, right? Now, listen, I'm, I'm a big ex – you know, I taught uh, and coached football pretty much my entire life, and, and now I do more administrative work. Um, f Long John Silver says following who? Here, I'll show you. Um, it's this, it's Playbook Products. You know, see that? They're the ones that are that are sponsoring the giveaway. Um, they're, they just told me that they wanted to, they liked my channel, and they like you guys, and they wanted to give you guys something. Um, 
as a giveaway and to promote their product. I think it's great. Um, it's sweet. I hope I get a set of these coaches with the play. But make sure you follow them on Twitter. All right, so this is one of my favorite plays here. And so like I was talking about, um, I, I, I really like the X's and O's of football. Um, you know, there's a lot to break down on this play here. Okay, watch this. Okay, not great. Not great. Okay, so see, you're going to see... See here, he's like not in a good stance, right? Like you want to kind of be lower, uh, especially when you're anticipating um, a tackle, right? Um, just too up, too upright, just not ready for the snap. Um, he doesn't really have his eyes. I mean, he's looking this way when he knows his targets right here. Okay, so at the snap, he's gonna. Uh, not, I mean, this this isn't a guy I'd even put on the field. Not very coordinated. You can he's running with his hands up here. Um, that's not form running. You're supposed to run like the form running here. Really high tackle here, like real high, like grabbing around the shoulders, and and that's not that's not our aiming point, right? That's that's not my that's not where I, where I teach them. And, and I know Logan Cook's low. This is a good athlete that knows how to stay low, right? He's gonna. I mean, Maurice Jones drew his jersey's on the wall behind me. Was known for creating leverage, right? This is too high. This is too high. And he's lucky that Logan Cook wasn't driving his legs because he misses the tackle here. I mean, if Logan Cook didn't have a knee down already, right? If he wasn't down already, this there's no way this is a tackle. There's no way. There's just no way that that's a tackle. And then, I mean, you're going to get up and you're going to, like, console him after you miss the tackle. I mean, look at the size difference between – punter and high school quarterback Logan Cook and this jackpot of a ref who for some reason thinks it's okay to just tackle a professional football player at the moment he's about to make a play absolutely unexcusable I understand that they're trying to make uh, some sort of some sort of thing on on not getting a practice kick on a timeout but absolutely Absolutely unacceptable. Figured, uh, I don't know, that play just stood out to me, and it wasn't a touchdown pass. <laughs> All right, let's do this giveaway here. All right, let me get to where it started. All right, so it's about here. All right, I'm literally closing my eyes. I'm scrolling up and down. And the first name I see is Chris Mason. Congratulations, Chris Mason. All right, so if you're still here, Chris, um, hit me up on uh, Twitter, and I will tell you uh, – or Instagram, and I will tell you how to get your prize, all right? So congratulations, Chris Mason. Guys, you saw my eyes were closed. I didn't cheat. I looked at the first name. Um, I'm not like these cheating refs, so congratulations, Chris. If you didn't win, I'm going to try and do more stuff um, like this in the future because it seems like people like it, and it's at least like to give back to you guys. So congratulations, Chris. If you didn't win and then now you turn the stream off, come back and watch us one day. I'm glad you were here for the little bit that you were. If you're still here, um, then, uh, then uh, okay, we'll give Chris – we'll give Chris uh, – he's got to respond here. Um. So we'll get how long? How long is enough time to give him adequate? God, oh, Chris is here. All right, good. Chris is here. Sweet, Chris. All right, hit me up. Um, I'm glad you were here. That would have been really bad if I had to do that again. All right, nice job, Chris. Way to go. Um, if you if you're leaving, <laughs> if you're leaving, uh, thanks for being here. If you don't want to leave, we're again we're talking Jags. My next play. Let let's do a let's do a um. Let's do a little Christian Kirk love fest here for a minute, um, if you will, and we'll start with the Trevor touchdown. To Christian Kirk. Now, do you guys remember? Um, I actually don't want this one. This is low definition. Do I have the high definition? See, boys, I take care of you guys. See, the high def version wasn't available last night on the Monday night show. And I was like, you know what? These boys deserve. Um, they deserve to get the high def version of this play. Okay, here we go. We're going to play this play through, and I'm going to brag on myself for a second. And I don't normally like to do that. Great jump from Juwan Taylor, like always. Great catch there. Great throw from Christian Kirk. Um, the end zone's a cool a cool view. Watch this jump by Juwan Taylor, like always. I don't know how that's not a false start. I really don't know, but he's been doing it all year, and, and he gets away with it, so I'm cool with it. This is just a, a, an, out loud, an out route by Christian Kirk. <clears throat> Let's see here. Beautiful catch, man. What? A, I mean, I don't... 
these people that are trying to be like, oh, like, yeah, he he was he's good, but we paid him a lot. Well, that's why you paid him a lot, because he's good. Okay, great throw by Trevor. I talked about it yesterday. He's got that pylon throw down. I mean, he can throw it to where only his receiver gets it. Um, but look, here's the thing. Like, Christian Kirk, if you go back, and, and they're all logged on my uh, YouTube channel, and go back and watch the Christian Kirk breakdown video, where we broke down video of Christian Kirk at Arizona before he played a single snap, and we talked about what type of player he was going to be. We talked about him. These were his top things. Him being a great route runner, but his number one greatest thing I always said was Christian Kirk is the best out route runner I have seen that's currently playing. He All these plays that he made last night, a lot of them, he had a lot of great run after the catches, but he's running outside. I mean, with the touchdown here, let's, I mean, let's get another one here, man. This is the final drive of the game. Okay, final drive of the game. We're going to take a look at Christian Kirk. Um, okay, he's in the slot right here. Look at this. Dude, I'm telling you, the dude is insane on these out routes. I mean, when I say good route runner, I don't just mean like, like when I talk about Calvin Ridley being a good route runner, I talk about the, the dude doesn't even get touched by a defensive back. He could be wearing flags and be the best flag football player because he doesn't even, doesn't even get touched by the defensive backs. Kirk's strategy on this play is to actually drive his defender upfield and then break out. I mean, this is an advanced route running move here. Okay, so let's take a look at it again. And again, a great throw, great catch. I mean, this out route, look at that. Great throw, great catch. I mean, just an insane play. I mean, Bryce Callahan kind of got picked on a bit there in the second half, like I will say. I, mean, I know their other corner got injured. But what an effortless what if, I mean, I mean, I know this is Christian Kirk Love Fest, but this just, just looks so effortless for Trevor Lawrence. He doesn't even step into it all the way. He doesn't even step into it. He, like, keeps the weight on his back foot still. Like, he, he transfers a little bit of weight to his front foot, but a lot of it's still on the back foot there. And that's, like, not what you're taught when you're a quarterback. And he still makes an accurate throw with pretty much just arm strength. Um, what a catch, man. Through the ground. Let's watch that. Dude, I could watch this all day. I love it. I love it, boys. Um, invite me over for a beer so I can use the coaster. All right, Jack Gator. Absolutely. Uh, I live in um, I live in uh, Jack's Beach, technically Ponte Vedra Beach, but I grew up in Jack's Beach, so I claim Jack's Beach. But I, I live like half of a mile into Ponte Vedra Beach, if you know the landscape of Jacksonville at all. Uh, DJM, those of you only here for the giveaway, shame on you. Thank you, DJM. I mean, I, I was glad they're, they, they were here. They're probably no longer with us. If you stayed for the first time, welcome. It's fun, I think. Josh L. says, Kirk was so clutch, he's tough at the catch point. He is, and for the guy of his size, I didn't think he would be that tough and that strong at the, at the point of attack. Absolutely. Mr. Chimes, what was the reason for the ref freaked out so much on Logan? Uh, so I, I heard on the radio today, I think Tom McManus said, um, not Tom McManus, um, Jeff Lagerman said that um, the NFL refs have put an emphasis on not allowing um, kickers to get the practice kick when you ice them for whatever reason. Uh, it, turns the, it, it turns the icing timeout into an advantage if you get a practice kick. So I think they were trying to eliminate that. Long John Silver um, says... Brandon Sheriff didn't practice today. He hasn't practiced, I don't think, in weeks. Um, I've talked about it before. Um, I heard from a little birdie that he has a really serious abdomen injury. And the fact that he's playing through his abdomen injury is like supposed to be insanely incredible. So that's what a little birdie told me. Uh, Christian Kirk is elite. Shea says the Jags took those Asante picks personally. Marvin destroyed him in the end zone, and they ran around him on the ETN fourth down, a couple of other plays. Yeah, it was funny. Um I talked to some non-Jags fans today, and they had thought that Asante Samuel hadn't been playing well this year. And they were surprised Asante Samuel had those interceptions because he had been who some teams had picked on. All right, let's take a look at another Christian Kirk uh, play here. I think we all know this one. Um, again, this – now, I can't say enough good things about Derwin James. Okay, I personally – wanted to move up in the draft and get Derwin James. Um, I think he's one of the best secondary players in the NFL when he's healthy. 
This is a hard ask here, okay? They're in cover one. They're going to rotate to this one high middle free safety. So basically, he's just playing in the middle of the field. Um, they're going to man up this. They're probably pattern matching. First guy in, first guy out, some sort of situation. Um, I can't remember if they blitz or if there's some sort of linebacker drop. But essentially, you're going to have Derwin James one-on-one -on -one with Christian Kirk. Now, this is a hard ask from Derwin James. But Derwin James is good enough uh, safety that he could do this. Watch this move that Christian Kirk puts on him. That's, I mean, that's, that's clinical. Again, there's the out route, right? There's the out route. We talk about it. I mean, Christian Kirk <laughs> is the master of the out route. We call it, we, we call it the corner. You know, this is the corner, more of a corner to an out. Um, but what a move here. Just that stick move inside, right? Like I used to teach defensive backs when I was coaching them that wherever the receiver first puts their exaggerated weight, they're usually going the opposite direction, Right. Here, you're going to see him stomp his right foot. Get, he get, I mean, this is the goal of the, of the st we call it the stick fake or the stick nod, um, to flip Derwin's hips. Now his hips are facing this way, and his aiming point is out this way. So now you have flipped the safety's hips the opposite direction of where Trevor is going to throw you the ball. This is a win for a wide receiver. This is what you try to avoid when you're a defensive back. Um, there's no like, I mean, there's no good way out of this. Um, if you're really athletic, um, you'll try to just kind of turn back inside. Some guys that I used to teach do the baseball turn. You give up a couple more yards on the front end, but you end up, you can guarantee you a tackle at some point here or help coming here. Whereas if you turn in, you can get burnt up the field. Um, but this is the goal. This is an elite safety. This is an elite safety. Um, the, the problem was, and again, I talk about like, oh, it's that easy. Just teach them not to flip their hips. The problem is when you play guys that are insanely fast, they won't pump fake you. They'll just run a post with four, two speed and you're chasing them down the field, watching them run in the end zone. So there's really no good way for a corner to handle or a defensive back to handle this situation. Um, you have to get pressure. That's the, I mean, that's the only answer. If we're looking at who to blame here for the chargers, you got to get pressure. I mean, if you're going to send five guys at, an empty or at a 10 gun set um six they sent six guys so great job jags offensive line the only way this play is able to happen and i know we, we just i just gave christian kirk a lot of credit but the only way this is able to happen is if these five guys with the help of etn can block these six guys this is a great job by the offensive line and pass protection you know juan taylor is going to kick early you know, Walker Little is going to probably try to hold him here. No, good blocking. Great job. Oh, he got Trevor got the ball out quick. Great job. Great job all the way around, man. Kudos to everybody on this play. Everyone talking about the Chiefs are going to go down. It's plays like that that are like, yeah, honestly, we could hang with the Chiefs. Absolutely. Um, Long John Silver says, if we beat the Chiefs, I'll donate $200. Oh, dang, Long John. Um, okay. Listen, I'm cool with it. If you change your mind, I'm cool with that too. Um, I think you mean win, says DJM. <laughs> uh, the NFL, this is from Jags Fan Cave. The NFL is not ready for the elite route running duo of Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley. Dude, if you guys think the bandwagon fans are bad now, wait till we get Calvin Ridley. And like, heaven forbid, Balky goes stupid and goes and gets DeAndre Hopkins. Right, heaven forbid, because what do you even do? I mean, you don't really need Ingram at that point. I mean, we'd love to have Ingram, um, but if you can trot out those four guys, I mean, that's just as good as having Ingram and not having DeAndre Hopkins. It's probably an upgrade. So um, I know we love Ingram, but man hurts is your blocking tight end, and, and, and Ingram's just another receiver. Um, Shatley is that guy, says DJM. Shatley is a great guy. Oh, you're Walker. Peyton, Man of the Year nominee from the Jaguars. I saw he presented um, a guy at the last game with a um, Super Bowl tickets or before last game. Actually, I actually met the guy. I uh, met the guy. He owns like a coffee shop and like gives back to inner city kids. Um, Ron Armstrong, met him. Nice guy. Uh, has a lot of energy. Uh, you're right. My bad. Says <laughs> John Silver. Uh, talking about Shatley. Red Jet Two Hundred Six says Marvin was wide open too. Christian Paraguin says, can't wait for Balky gets D-hop too. Um, yeah, Christian. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, Ron says, if we can hang with the Chiefs into the fourth quarter, the Jaguars are a great fourth quarter team. I like our chances then. I agree. Chiefs are a good fourth quarter team too, though. I like that. I like to see us just play a complete game like we did. Um, uh, you know, who did we play? We played. Uh, oh man, I'm having a mind blank. Um, the the Colts and the, you know and the Texans, just a complete game all the way around. Man, I hope Ridley isn't rusty. He hasn't played in a while. I mean, he's playing. I I get what you mean. Like. I, I get what you mean. I, I, these players, he's not going to be rusty. I mean, you look at a guy like Deshaun Watson coming out rusty, and it's a little weird, and that kind of makes me hesitant. But playing quarterback is different than playing receiver. And, um, you know, catching traffic and, or, or playing through contact, it might take him a bit to adjust. But I think he's been can hopefully working on his speed and agility this whole time. I mean, I, he's a professional. I, he's gotten to this point, so he probably has. Philip Butcher says the Jags have the players and the recipe to beat the Chiefs. We just have to play four quarters. You're right. We can't give up the first half uh, like we did against the uh, Chargers. Shay says, what if the Jags put together four entire quarters for once? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Listen, I hope so. Uh, I th they're capable. They're capable. He's got to do it. I, I think, like, what we started to see, and, and I don't know if, like, this relates, but we started to see teams at the end of the year, like, intentionally try to hold the ball and control the time of possession. Time of possession against the Titans was insanely lopsided. Time of possession for the Chargers, insanely lopsided. Like, teams' game plan is to hold the ball against us. They're afraid of our offense in Doug Peterson. So, like, when you're seeing these early deficits, it's because the other team's getting the ball, it, we're not scoring on our first or second drive, and we're not getting our third drive of the half until, you know, four or five minutes left in the half. And a lot of times we don't do anything with that one, and then we score on our two-minute offense right going into the half. So it's like it's, it's kind of like the way teams are playing us, but also we need to play better. Speaking of we need to play better, let's take a look at a, a play we need to play better at, right? This is a um, – this is a sack we gave up. And again, I'm not going to harp on too much negative because, listen, we're celebrating here. But we do have a situation that we, like, I, I am honest at the fact that the Chiefs are going to try to do things that, um, th that the Chargers ran successfully. So here you're going to see a really, really good play design by Brandon Staley. And I know he just fired a bunch of people. He fired the linebackers coach, the quarterbacks coach, the passing game coordinator, the offensive coordinator. I know all that happened. But Brandon Staley knows how to drop a blitz here now, okay? I talk about all the time that uh, football a lot of times comes down to rock, paper, scissors, basically, meaning what did the offensive coordinator call versus what did the defensive coordinator call, right? We, we talk about it all the time. This is a situation where the defensive coordinator won the rock, paper, scissors matchup here, okay? So take a look. I mean, the guy who's going to get the sack is him. Pre-snap, you don't even think he's even thinking about blitzing, right? You see all these guys, I mean, walking down the line. Uh, you got a guy out here in the nine tech, a guy out here in the nine tech, um, a stand-up nine, a hand in the dirt seven, if you want to get technical, a shade. Like, there's no telling what's happening here. You figure you're getting pressure here somewhere. What you don't expect is a looping blitz here from your corner. Let's take a look here. I mean, I was tr I mean, I was trying to assign blame, and assign blame is a bad word. As a coach, I look at these plays, and I'm like, all right, what would I talk about in the film room that we need to do better next time we see this? And this is really difficult. I mean, this is really difficult. Like, there's no way Tyler Shatley can know he's coming, right? This is, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. This is a great design blitz right here. And sometimes you're just going to have to take the matchup. I guess where the Jags could have been smarter is when you're playing a team like Brandon Staley, you know he's going to throw exotic blitzes at you, so you probably need to have a running back back here on almost every single play. And if it is an empty set formation like it is here, like see, so you can see Hasty lined up here in the slot. If it is going to be empty here, it's got to be quick. Got to be quick here. All right, so I mean, look, I mean, Little has to kick out um, on Khalil Mack. Uh, Shatley has to help because he's the only threat that he sees here. He slides down. I mean, this is this is just a good blitz here. Watch.
Now, maybe, I mean, again, I'm stretching here. Maybe Walker Little. I mean, who, who are you going to look at? Khalil Mack or a looping, blitzing corner, right? Maybe Walker Little should have identified this threat as the more immediate threat because of the uh, the Evan Ingram, um, just little chip block here. I don't know. Great play, though. I'll give credit to the other team. If you guys think I'm a big homer, I am a big homer, but I'll give credit where credit's due. No problem at all. Um, need five Trevor Tutties this week. Agnew going to have his best game of the season Saturday. I've been hearing that every week, TJM. I love Agnew as much as any of you guys. But his role in the offense has diminished every single week. Like, since week one to now, I feel like every week it's diminished uh, every single week. Like I said, what is it, four snaps last week on offense? Your boy's a kicker turner. I know we want him to be in the offense, but Long John Silver says Jags went from worst record to playoffs, and my sons went from best record to out of the playoffs. Hey, listen, at least you had a, pl a team um, there. I'm an Orlando Magic fan, as you can tell by the jersey in the background. We haven't been good since 2011. Um, my Avalanche won the Stanley Cup. That's why you see the Avs jersey in the background. Jags are Jags. Um, I'm a Rays fan. They're they're pretty good most years. Let's take another play here. All right. How about this one? Again, I'm going to try to stay away from the Trevor touchdowns just immediately. Um, a play where Arden Key might get a pressure. But, I mean, not really going to show up on the stat sheet. But watch what he's able to do. Now, this is obviously their, like, NASCAR package. Because you look at who they have in. Right? Arden Key. Kalevon. Um, this looks like Hamilton. This is Roy Robertson Harris. So none of your like edge rushers are in right now um, for whatever reason. And watch what Arden Key is able to do on this bull rush. Lined out. Uh, I don't know what I mean. Some people, I mean, I typically call this the nine technique. Um, when you're outside the tight end this far and stand up, most people call this the nine technique. So this is what a lot of teams would call or defensive coordinators would call the wide nine formation and um i like the wide nine it's obviously susceptible against the run uh, your linebackers have to be really good at filling these gaps right here but um you typically run this on like a third down and i think this was a third down because if it's third and long you're not worried about the run right so watch arden key here with the bull rush I mean, that's the high motor that he just plays with. And I think one of, this was one of the plays that led to a punt. Um, and again, a great job by everyone kind of collapsing the pocket. It's a good job by the secondary. I mean, no one's open. He goes through like three progressions right there before he settles on a check down. And by the end, it's too late. Um, great job. Great job. I mean, he, he did have a guy coming open, right? Like, right, if you can, you can barely see it um, on, on the screen here, but he's coming open if he just has a if he can look there but with the pressure from Arden Key and everyone else kind of coming and barreling down great job great job Arden Key it's been good this year um Paraguayan says damn 4 30 a.m that I have to be at wait how did you know Christian I have to be at the airport at 4 30 a.m on Friday how did you know that are we talking about the same thing? That's a little spooky there, Christian. Shea says, weather in Kansas City is showing some sleet snow for the game time Saturday. I know. I know. I was just thinking about that. I was looking up the rules on if you can take an umbrella into the game. So check this out. You are allowed to take a compact umbrella into the stadium, but you're not allowed to open it. <laughs> so in case you want it for the, for the way out and the way in, you're allowed to take one in. But you can't open it in the stadium. It makes sense when I started thinking about it. You're like blocking the people's view behind you. That's probably not fair. Special teams, not offensively for Agnew, I'm guessing. Red Jet says Kirk had some end characteristics drops in that Chiefs game, too. I imagine they won't carry over. All right, I like it. Richard Bueller says key the wax off technician. Oh, with the uh, wax on, wax off. Uh, he's very good with his hands. Uh, Cameron Boyser, what up, Cam? He says, dang, just about missed another. Let's go, Jags. What up, Cam? Good to see you, man. I was talking about you on yesterday's show. Christian Pargwine says, no, I was talking to Irish. Oh, my bad. Irish Gooner's laughing. So apparently their interaction was hilarious. <laughs> I'll have to go back and read it. 
Christian, are you going to the game? Yes, I am going to the game. I'm leaving Friday morning. Uh, Robert Atchard says, poncho time. <laughs> yep. Uh, we're definitely going to be wearing the ponchos. I have a sick, like, Jags, like, uh, like short sleeve windbreaker. I know that sounds weird, but I'm going to wear that over whatever I'm wearing, and then that'll be an extra layer of protection against the weather. Big brain. CF Coaster says, I think it's pretty safe to say we have an improved, we have improved since week 10, and we were within 10 points then, so fair. I don't think the Chiefs have had any huge injuries I know they're running back position. Clyde Edwards Hilaire hasn't been playing. They've been getting a lot of out of McKinnon. But that's what Thursday's show is for. Reminder, this week's show is going to be on Thursday because I'll be leaving Friday. Gary K says, hit the like button, y'all. Duval Ballers. Yeah, yes, thank you, Gary. Thank you for the reminder. Hit the like button. Helps the algorithm. It helps more people watch. Um, you also could tell a friend. That would help people watch as well. It was very humbling walking around the Jags games recently because I'm getting a lot of love from Jags fans. Um, and I appreciate it. I don't deserve it, but I love it. Christian says, I, I made it to the playoff game and finally witnessed the Jags win in person. That's what's up, Christian. Hope you had a good time. I definitely had a good time. All right, let's see what else we got here. Plays. Um, how about, how about a, a touchdown from, from Trevor? Well, let, again, high def, right? This is going to be a throw to Marvin Jones. We broke this down a uh, pretty lengthy last night's show. So go back and watch that. If you want to watch that, you should. Um, again, just a, just a, an old man. And when I say old man, he's younger than me. Okay. Old man running a great route there. Again, another stick nod, another great route, great protection. Lines up on the outside. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. And, and listen, and look, you notice something here, right? Look, trips left bunch. Again, this is the exact same formation that they ran the ETN swing play out of. So if you're a player, uh, this actually happened before, so they probably set up the swing pass. But look, this is, you can run both. The, you can do the same thing. You could swing it out to ETN, block, 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 and then ETN could definitely get yards if you wanted to do that there. On, that was their fourth down play. What set up the fourth down play? I think this was a vertical. I think this was a block and release, and then just an out route. Great route. Uh, great job. Smooth route, man. And got held. Great throw by Trevor. Very smooth. C. Breacher says, I'm so late. <laughs> yes, you are, C. Breacher. It's all right. They go on VOD. And I do like three shows a week. So I will see you on, on the next show. But I'm glad you're here. You're a channel member, so I really appreciate that. We'll, we'll hold that frame there for a second. Tech Jericho says, do you think the Chiefs' bye week helps them or takes away their momentum? Some teams come out sluggish after bye weeks. Here's hoping at least. Good point. Um, that's, again, something we'll get into on Thursday's show. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something to think about. A lot of teams do come out sluggish, I mean, at least for a half. When you've got a team like the Chiefs, they're probably the least likely to commit that error um, because they have a lot of experience all over their team and coaches. We're going to have to play a good game. That's what the playoffs are about. You know what? And the Chiefs are going to have to play a good game to beat us. Um, the, the Chargers played a good game for a half. It wasn't enough. You're going to have to play a good game against the Jags. The Jags are going to play a good game, and that's what makes playoff football great and fun and watchworthy. Cash shoots says, I'm in Kentucky, so I hope we beat the Chiefs and the Bengals beat the Bills so I can drive to Cincinnati. It's only two hours away. How far is Kansas City from where you are in Kentucky? I honestly don't know. I get I, that, that part of the country was like a lot bigger than I thought when I drove through it. When you look at it on a map, it seems small. But you start driving through it, and you're like, dang, Tennessee's kind of long. And then you're like, St. Louis to Chicago is like closer than I thought. But then like, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's confusing. The Midwest is confusing to me. Okay. Uh, can't go, but I can tailgate. Yes, sir. Cass. Sea Breacher says, time to go shock the world. That's it. Still the man that's lucky says, Andy Reid is 22-3 and three coming off of a bye. Oh, well, there you go. Good. Well, listen, nothing like going 22-4. and four. Ron Beedry, on the Marvin Jones touchdown on sounds of the game, you can hear Doug Peterson say he's got Marvin open before Trevor throws the ball. I love it. It's kind of stuff that I do. Um, all right, let's do um, – what other plays do we have here? This play's kind of fun to watch. Um, great play by the defensive line. This is the play where um, Trevon Walker gets called for the – 
And listen, the more I watch it, the more I get why they threw the flag. Because <laughs> watch it from this angle. And I know Herbert took a dive. Like, listen, I know. But it looks bad. Like, it just looks bad. Like, in live. And think about it. <laughs> I mean, he whips his head back. I mean, obviously, the head whip from Herbert sells it. But that's a dangerous now. And people are like, oh, I hate floppers. But here's what I've always said about flopping. You actually increase your risk of injury when you flop. 100%. Um, Herbert, like, whipping his head back like that, like, that's not smart, especially when it's insanely easy to get a concussion by getting hit in the back of the head. All right? So, yeah, you know, probably some acting job, but the push... <laughs> The head whip is like obviously you're f you're faking it, but I mean Fatu Kazi is a big man too, so <laughs> it's just funny to watch. This is the same ref that tackled him? I think, boy, this, this is the same ref that tackled Logan Cook. Look at this leg up in the air. What, what are you getting stretched by the trainer? You doing a little hamstring stretch there? This guy, man. Someone keep an someone keep an eye on this guy right here, okay? All right, someone keep an eye on this guy. I don't know, man. Something's up there. Look, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it probably is a duck. All sayings my mom taught me when I was young. Um, that I think are uh, is true. Um, guess we dodged a bullet. Oh, I'm behind. Okay. Uh, Peregrine says left foot just got canned today. Yeah, I know. Listen, again, I, I will say when I'm wrong and I'll say when I'm right. I've been more right recently and there will be a streak soon where I'm more wrong. Okay. So I'm not the guy here trying to gloat, but I wanted no part of Byron Leftwich. Okay. I, you know, I, I, you can go back to the videos. That's why I love them all saved. I wanted no part of Byron Leftwich. Right. And I hated it because I couldn't come out and say I didn't like him as a coach because on Twitter I was like, I had said something like, um, Oh, like, I just don't really want Byron. I'd rather have, like, I wanted, um, I wanted, before he was, like, popular, uh, was it Kevin O'Connell that went to the Vikings? Before he was even in the conversation, before anyone was even talking about him, he, he's, he was just the quarterback's coach for the Rams. He wasn't even the coordinator. He didn't even call plays. I was like, go after that guy. He's a McVay guy. He's young. Um, that's who Trevor needs to be paired with. And that's who I wanted. And I said that on Twitter. And someone was like, oh, you're racist. I was like, <laughs> So I'm not racist, and I did not want Byron Leftwich. Okay. Um, needless to say, can we give credit to um, Brandon Sheriff? Here's a here's a talent. I I bet you guys didn't know he had. Okay. Trevor thrown out of trouble, and there you go. Now you might have missed it. Watch it again. Watch it again till the very end. Now, all right. Brandon Sheriff. Watch him. What a snag. What a snag. Like, I was going to make a joke about like Zay Jones taking catching lessons, but Zay Jones had some big catches in this game, so that joke probably wouldn't have landed. But look at this, man. And what's also impressive, if you take a look at him, he's not even facing. I mean, this is like a, the jugs machine drill where you're like facing the wrong – like and then hit, and you turn around. That's what Sheriff did here. Watch. Watch. He turns around, balls at eye level, makes a grab, scoops it. Scoop. And then look, he goes up field. Bro, oh, I'd love to see this matchup right here. Let's see 68 v 23 in an Oklahoma drill. Tell me, tell me how that turns out. Oh, I love it, boys. I love it. Uh, let me get to some of these comments. Uh, Josh Burns says, I was livid in the first half. Um, DJM says, man, this ref won't stop. Uh, Debo says, Trayvon's starting to look like Dante Fowler. I don't know if I agree with that, but I'll 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 sit I'll chew on it for a second. KCG says Mahomes told Trevor we have a good team the last time we played. He was right. Oh gosh, the scroll is going too fast. Uh, he was right. It's going to be a battle on Saturday, and Mahomes knows it. Trevor undefeated on Saturdays and in 2023. Just saying. Trevor got slammed to the ground too, and they didn't call it. I know because I'm, I'm telling you. Okay, now I'm okay. It, it was it was it was the black hat here. This is the guy right here. Look at him. He was probably he was probably quick to call a sack. Look at him. Pfft, probably had money on the game. Probably had money on the game. 
Uh, Alvin Jackson says, Duval. Alvin, uh, good to see you. Cash Hoot says, I'm black, and I didn't want Byron Leftwich either. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. I'm glad. I don't. I, 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 listen, I just didn't want him. And it really, to be completely honest with you, had, it wasn't much to do with what I thought of him as a coach because um, he hadn't really had a chance to be like in the spotlight like he was last year. I just as, I remember him as a player in the Jags. I remember as a kid being at the games, like booing Byron Leftwich, like boo, boo. And for me to boo an a professional athlete, like I just couldn't live with myself, like booing him again. Like here we are again. Like, we got the Tom Coughlin situation. It got the same thing happened, right? We loved him. We hated him. He retired. We forgot about the hating part. We remember the love part. Sign him again. Hate him again. So it's like, I don't know. How many sacks would Walker have if he didn't have those fouls? That's a good point. It's a very good point. Because he's had a bunch that it's like, yeah, good call. Um, Trevor has nearly tripled his stats from last year. I love it, Chris. Chris, make sure you hit me up on Twitter. So I don't have your contact information any other way. So hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. Just DM me, and I'll make sure you get those coasters. Chris is our winner of the coasters tonight. DJM says, pause. <laughs> Leftwich was just too casual even when he lost. Gabriel, I know that bothers some people. I'm not sure if that bothers me. I, I don't know. I, I don't think that would bother me. Like, your your demeanor, if you can coach, you can coach. I mean, Belichick is stoic in mean, win and loss, and I think he's, like, praised for it because he wins. Um, Pete Carroll's emotional, you know, win or loss, and he gets praised for it when he wins, right? So it's just like, if you win, you could, you know, whether you're stoic or emotional, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> Left which could really help the Texans. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, still, the man says, Doug was always my first choice. I got talked into Leftwich, though, not going to lie. Doug was always the guy, though. I think a lot of fans were there with you, Still, the man, 100%. Um, I think a lot of people, when they first thought of Doug Peterson, they're like, oh, this is what we need. It's the opposite of Urban Meyer. Um, and then you, you heard Byron Leftwich, and you're like, okay, like he did, he, he was decent last year with Tampa. Um, so if Tom Brady endorses him, then, you know, he's got to be decent. So I think a lot of I, – I wouldn't feel bad about it. I just never wanted him. Again, nothing to do with the coaching. It was just like remembering him and being scarred from watching him as a fan when he was a player when we drafted him. Josh Burns says left, which abandons the run too much. Okay. Fair. Um, again, don't really watch a lot of Tampa Bay football. I only have time to watch the Jags games four times. Sorry. Uh, Gabriel says, I meant when he was a quarterback here in Jax. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, I got gotcha. you. You meant his demeanor as a player. Okay. You're right. He was. He was. Now that I'm thinking back at it, he was. Remember that game where he like broke his leg and finished the game with Marshall that like really catapulted his draft stock? Shay says, I need the refs to keep the same energy they used to stop those kicks to stop the unbaited to the quarterback, unabated to the quarterback when those plays were whistled dead. Step in front of the D end. Okay, if you think, Shay, you know the refs better than me. If you think a ref's going to step in front of a D end, <laughs> I wouldn't even get close to stepping in front of a D end. Uh, no, I wouldn't tackle Logan Cook. He's huge. I think he's like the tallest punter in the league. He's huge. Don't quote me on that. I kind of made that up. But I know he's really tall. I think he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Big punter. Former quarterback. High school, if you didn't know. Um, Shay, you, you need to, like, bop him on the head, Shay. Uh, Cameron says, I really hope Sean Payton doesn't go to the Texans. I don't think he will. I don't know why. I, just, I feel like Sean Payton wants to step into a good situation. If he's going to come out of retirement. Or at least a decent situation. I don't think any of these quarterbacks coming out does anything for him. I, I, I haven't seen Sean Payton coach a guy. Like Stroud or Young? I mean, maybe a Levis type guy? Josh L. says, Leftwich and Peterson were my top two candidates. Safe to say we made the right choice. From Dougie to Urban to Dougie. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, where's that Matt Jones jersey? Josh is right here. I just found it the other day. Um, cleaning out my office in here. I would uh, give it away, but it's not mine. It's Joey's. So shout out to Joey, wherever he, wherever he is right now. Uh, the Fire of Desire. What up, Fire? Says, uh, people like Byron because he wanted Balky out. Okay, that's true. I'd forgotten about that, Fire. Very, very, very good point. Very good point. He wanted to bring in Adrian Wilson. Okay. True. I'm glad you brought me back down to earth on that. 
Ron Beedry, just because you can play with a sore leg <laughs> doesn't make you a great quarterback for crying out loud. Well, I agree with you, but I think sore leg is a little bit of an understatement. Although I do agree with your point. I do agree with your point. Oh, Shay says Logan warms up throwing 50-yard bombs before every – I bet he does, bro. I'm telling you. Logan Cook, man. If I get a Logan Cook jersey up in here. Uh, can we fake a punt once this season? Maybe we're saving it. I mean, we did open the game with an onside kick against the Chiefs last time we played them. Cody Jackson says, yeah, but he won the game with a broken leg, so kind of cool. Uh, Burns says, thank you. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, man. Well, this has been a lot of fun, guys. Um, man, yeah, a ton of fun. I can't wait till, um, you know, I can't wait till th this game. I mean, I'll be there on Saturday. If you're going... Hit me up. If you're not going, follow my Twitter and Instagram. I'm going to be, like, live documenting it. I, I'm, I'm going to get someone to help. Listen, here's my commitment. I'm going to get – my New Year's resolution was to get better at social media. I'm really good at just at talking. I'm not good at social media. I don't know. Like, it feels kind of vain to me. I don't know. I, mean, I got to get over it, right? So I got someone that's going to help me. And so uh, I'm, she's going to make sure that everything's documented, and I'm, I don't care if I'm that weirdo, uh, but I got to do it. Uh, Sean Payton going to Denver and Kansas is eight hours from Louisville, Kentucky, by the way. Thank you for answering cast. It's been a while since I asked that. I almost forgot. Eight hours is a long time. Longer than I thought. Uh, Byron Leftwich should be the Chargers new OC. He'll probably get a job somewhere. A lot of times when offensive coordinators get fired, unless they have been in the league for a while, they typically take a couple of, of seasons as a, uh, position coach on offense before they get another chance. And usually they go to a good team and get promoted when the good OC moves on. That's typically what happens. Heck yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Chris Mason, congratulations again, Chris. Uh, I hope you enjoy the coasters. Um, I will uh, hit me up, and I will tell you how to claim them. Uh, hit the like button, and let's get ready for that Thursday hype show. Yes, sir, Shay. Yes, sir. Uh, Thursday night show. Thank you for reminding me, Shay. We're doing Thursday night show because I'm flying out somehow... Christian knew at, I have to be at the, I, have to, I have to be at the airport at four thirty. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it's gonna be an early day on Friday. Um, so I won't be able to do a show that night. I will do. I'm gonna do some stuff. Oh, I'm, I may try to do like um, the YouTube live. I might try to do like a live show from my phone. It could be an absolute disaster, boys. But you know, we may try because I've never tried it before. And uh, you know, who here to try it? So let's do it. Ask a Gen Z kid. <laughs> to help you with the socials. Uh, Christian, that's what I did. That's exactly what I did. Um, yeah, I did. So we'll see. Well, I actually got a buddy who's my age who, he, I mean, shout out to Matt. Um, I'll send this clip to him because I love him that much. One of my childhood best friends. Um, used to live in Jacksonville, grew up with him, moved away. Wish he'd moved back. He's insane at social media. Um, he, he made a video. And if you go, oh, God, where could you find it? If you go on my Twitter and you like go back to when Gardner Minshew beat the Broncos in Denver, he made a sick like like video of, of us being there. So um, I'm, I'll, I might try to find that because I mean, shout out to Matt, shout out to Matt. Um, but he was really good at it. And one day he'll move back, and then I will have the greatest. You guys think, you guys think those guys um, who were like, like Noah Thomas and uh, I, I don't I don't know. I'm sorry. Like the other guys that make the hype videos, you think they're good? Wait till you see my boy Matt. 9 o'clock Thursday. Rico, as of now, the plan is 9 o'clock Thursday. If it, it, it should be then. If anything changes, I'll shoot it out on the social medias. Prediction for Bills Bengals. Bills. Bills are good. Bills might be better than the Chiefs. Uh, Beedry, come on, people. Only three likes? You can do better than that. You may have to refresh, Ron. You may have to refresh, but I appreciate it. Hit the like button if you have it. I wouldn't mind Leftwich as our OC. Cass, no. Come on now. We don't want him. We don't want Leftwich around here. We're, we're, we're done. We're done with him. We're done with him. We're done with him. All right, hey guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, again, uh, shout out to Chris Mason for winning. Um, the um, uh, make sure to follow everything in the channel description. It has my Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, um, and um, be looking out for some good content. Um, I'm pretty excited about the off season because um, I don't want the season to end. But those of you that've been out here for a while know that my like normal job kind of like gets lighter in the Jaguars off season. So I do a lot more like random stuff. So it's a lot of fun. So make sure you're subscribed for all that, and um, you can be alerted for that when it happens i appreciate you guys being here um thank you to everyone that was here all the channel members shay colorado jags fans long john silver um cameron boysvert uh nolly full cab cardiac cats 
uh, Long John Silver. I mean, every I mean everybody that was here. I appreciate it. Um, Kyle Donovan became a channel member. I will see you guys on Thursday. And until then, hit me up on Twitter, and we'll be talking back and forth.